things that you do for God, you are robbing yourself. Because everything to do with God is done consistently. You can't relate with God successfully in the absence of consistency. The seasons are consistent. Imagine if rain was coming any time or wind was coming any time. The confusion that was going to be in the world. But because they are consistent, we can program. And Hannah prayed, continued praying. She didn't just pray, she continued. And daily from house to house, the disciples did not cease breaking bread, prayers, fellowship. They didn't stop daily. Wherever you are, you can have a breakthrough if you are consistent. If you are just consistent, I can carry a hammer to a rock. If I hit it first, they might no sign. But if I continue hitting, I continue hitting, and I continue hitting. Very soon, you will see the rock in pieces. Some battles are won by consistency. Some battles are won by consistency. These are things that matter. They matter to our operation with God. Some years ago, when Zimbabwe had a crisis of bread, I was still staying in over the Hamilton Park so we will use the various shopping for our shopping. In those days when I go, the guys in the shop would spare bread for me. So that when I come, they will put in a box because it was not easy to get. They would just, I give them money and I collect my box and I go. Now because of activities, fastings and so forth, I had some days I didn't go to collect the bread. And it happened that I had a special visitor at home So Pastor C then said, oh, you can go to your boys, they can organize bread, and we make some breakfast. So I took the car, I went to the shop. When I arrived, the guys looked at me and said, I said, at least know where I The challenge with you is that we no longer know when do you come. It's not a bread issue, 
but it's your consistency. You might not even know what you are losing in life because of your inconsistency. You can have shame on the day you are supposed to have glory because of inconsistency. I want you to master this. <clears throat> Whether it's prayer, it's giving, it's visitations, it's preaching, whatever you're doing, be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Even if it does not look like you are winning. The man at Beseda was at the Beseda for 38 years, looking like he's not winning. But at the end, the whole chapter closed with him talking with Jesus. Because you can't be consistent and be disappointed. It's not possible. You can't be consistent and be disappointed. <clears throat> I feel you need to, to practice it, whether it's in communication. You know, there are certain things that the moment you are not consistent, you become automatically a suspect. <laughs> automatically you become a suspect even if you are a married man a woman you are coming at home at 4 p.m. then the following time you are coming at 7 the other time you are coming at 9 the other day you come probably the following day even if there is no room thinking you are doing something the routine is enough to confirm Something is wrong. I'll give you this example again. This is not my subject. I'm going to, have to share with you the subject I'm going to deal with. At Bible school, the institute, when I finished lecture, there was this student. He would run to me when I'm going. I remember those days I had this Jaguar. So he would come and give me a dollar. So I'll take the dollar and put there. Pray, he goes. They come, there I come, he put a dollar. I go. So my spirit was now getting programmed to my dollar. So then uh, days when I will come, I will actually wait in the car, waiting for my dollar. So I then found, ah, week one, week, what is going on? So I said, young man, the first thing you need to know is I didn't ask you for a dollar. I'm not broke. Even if you didn't give me, I didn't mind. Because I'm not using anything of your dollars. In fact, your dollars are still at the door of the car where you were giving me. They are still there. But the way you have failed to maintain consistency these few days is already a statement. You are involved in a particular sin. Can you confess? Because there is no inconsistency without entertainment of a particular sin. <laughs> then he started crying. <laughs> he said, I knew it. 
Because all the days when God was coming in the garden, before Adam messed up, Adam was welcoming God. The day he didn't welcome God, God knew. Where is Adam? That was enough to tell Adam you ate something. Because you can't be inconsistent unless you are involved in a particular sin or you are entertaining a particular sinful act. Last example as I go to my subject. <laughs> I had this one pastor. One day he sent me airtime. In those days, the airtime was not wired into your account. You were given bars of numbers. So he sent the numbers on my phone at 4 a.m. So, wow. Maybe he is praying or he thought of planting a seed. It's okay. The following day, it was at five past four. I said, okay. The following day, it was quarter to five. The following day, it was 25 past seven. The following day, it was quarter to 12. When it happened, I picked my phone. I said, hey, first thing is my phone does not use your airtime. I still have all of it. I didn't ask you. But this inconsistence you have shown me is already a confirmation of a disconnection between my spirit and your spirit. All these stages of going down up to 12, in four weeks, you will leave my ministry. I can tell you something will happen and you will leave. I already seen your journey in your inconsistency. <laughs> and in four weeks, he was already going. I said, ah, but I told you, I was reading the, the inconsistency was enough to tell me what's about to happen. You might not know that the greatest message you are giving to the church today is your inconsistence. It's not the sermons that you were preaching, no. But the inconsistence you have is actually probably what they are holding more than what you preached to them. They no longer know whether you are there on Sunday or not, or whether you will come on all night prayer or not, or are we fasting together or you are eating on your own. They, 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 there is no. Praise the Lord. I just want to share this. Now I want to talk to you about this topic it pays to serve the Lord. It pays to serve the Lord. Job chapter 36, verse number 11. Job 36, verse 11. 
if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they can do things, two things, obey and serve, they are out of poverty for the rest of their life. Another one will say, ah, are you telling me if I just save God, I will prosper and spend my years in prosperity? Yes. Very true. Even a wicked <clears throat> Laban, when Jacob came, he asked him, he said, I can save you. And he said, name what you want. Because you can't save me for nothing. A wicked Laban was saying, you can't save me for nothing. For not. Which means when you save something, must happen. Even the devil wants people to save him. He wants people to save him. The pain of Pharaoh was to lose Israel because they were saving him. Unfortunately, the church was never taught the reason why they were saved. They were delivered. Deliverance from Egypt was never freedom based. There was nothing to do with freedom. Deliverance from Egypt was service best. Let my people go that they may serve me. Even it started by saying in the wilderness, which means your wilderness cannot stop you from serving God. So the reason you are coming from Egypt is not because God has seen you are suffering too much. He's looking also for people to serve him. So your freedom is not the primary thing. Your freedom is secondary. The main thing is you were freed to serve. Delivered to serve. In Exodus chapter 4 verse number 23, God is even prepared to kill anyone who stops you from serving. He's prepared to kill because service is key. He said, I say unto thee, let my son go that he may save me. If thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. So God is even prepared to kill for blocking someone from serving God. So anyone who fights someone who is serving God has just registered themselves to be direct enemies of God. The reason for deliverance is service, not freedom. You can read from Exodus chapter 7, verse number 16, and chapter 8, verse number 1. Why do we serve him? For the great work he has done to us. First Samuel chapter 12, verse number 21. First Samuel chapter 12. Because he has done a great work to save us. 
He has done a great work to save us. Verse number 24, please. He has done a great work. He said, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all thy heart. For consider how great things he has done for you. So we serve in the understanding that God has done great things for me. He has done mighty things for me. What I'm teaching you, I want you to teach it others. Because he has done great things for me. That's why you find in Luke chapter 8, when Jesus delivered those women, Mary Magdalene, they became partners of Jesus because he delivered them from demons. But there are also people, Jesus delivered seven demons from this woman, but 6,000 from Legion. Legion never did anything. Hey, seven demons, you're saving God. 6,000 demons, you're saving no one. You're just going home. Because people forget why they were delivered, why they were healed, why they were given jobs, why they were given marriages, why they were given health. They forget the great work God has done for them. Say amen. If he sees, the enemy sees that you are now decided to serve God, he wants to alter the way you will serve. He wants to alter the way you will serve. Please pay attention to this. I need you to get it. He wants to alter the way you will serve. Now he can't deny you because you are decided, but he wants to alter the way you will serve. Exodus chapter 10, verse number 8, and verse 24 and 26. Chapter 8, verse number 28. Chapter 10, verse number 8, and 24 and 26. And Moses and Aaron brought, were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go save the Lord, your God. But I want to know, who are they that shall go? We need to know. Now we have agreed to go and save. But who are going? Who are going to save God? So the devil, even in a church, in a ministry, he wants to select certain people to save and the rest don't do anything. Who are those that are going to save? Verse number 24. <laughs> you don't just fail to save God. You are under attack. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye and save the Lord. Only, only let your flocks and your heads be stayed. Let your little children ones also go with you. Now, look at this picture. Now go and save, but don't go and save him with substance. Go with children. That your children are trained to know we save God, but we don't have money. We don't have anything to go for. So he wants you to be in ministry and save broke. You can't pay anything. You can't do anything. He said, go. If you are like that, go. Yeah, start ministry as long as you are broke. Go, go, go. Endorsed by demons. Go. Because you have nothing to offer when you go. And he wants it to be transgenerational, such type of ministry where you save broke. He wants your children to learn that. Verse 26. <laughs> oh my God. But hear what Moses said. Our cattle also shall go with us. They shall not a hoof be left. For thereof must we take to save the Lord our God. 
And we know not what we must save the Lord until we come either. We bundle everything. When we get there, we will know. You should not save God as they are saving God suspiciously. That when you come to church, you hide some money to home so that you are afraid the preacher will make you collect and give everything. Taking God like a suspect. Amen. Looking at God like a robber. You can't save God beyond your revelation. You have to have revelation to save God. You have to have revelation. You save God according to your determination. It's not an easy thing. It demands you to be determined to save him. Same chapter number 12, verse number, Exodus, same book, verse 31. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Arise up and get you forth from among my people, both you and your children. And he go, Save the Lord as you have said. So you can't save God beyond your determination to save. Which means Pharaoh was now getting used to know Moses cannot say anything except to saving God. He said, go and save him as you said. So the way you save God must be related to your confession. You can't undermine kingdom service and save God. You should be saving in accordance with the way you confess. And if you are not being used, you are useless. Period. If no one wants to use you, it's because you are useless. Who is looking for useless things? If they want to use you, it's because you are useful. As you said, you save him as you said, not as you are called. No, as you said, Moses was called, but decision to save is personal. It's not calling best. So don't think you are going to save God because you are called for it. No, you save God because you are determined to save God. Say amen. So how do we save God? How do we save God? Because I need you to know this. How do we save God? Because there are people who are busy and moving up and down and they fail to understand what needs to be done and they fail and they end up messing up and they end up thinking God is not fair because they don't know what needs to be done. Number one. Oh my God. You serve God in sincerity and in truth. In sincerity and truth. You need a genuine heart and you need truth. Joshua chapter 24, verse number 14. And first Samuel chapter 12, verse number 24. First Samuel 12, verse number 24. He said, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. Not all people who are sincere are truthful. There are people who are serving so sincerely, but hey, they don't know what is required when they are serving God. Say amen. Sincerity is not enough. Know what is required. It's very important for you to do so.
serve God in sincerity. Serve God in sincerity and in truth. In truth. What is the truth that you need when you serve God? Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse number 47 and 48. 47 and 48. Because thou hast not served the Lord thy God with the joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Because in ministry serving God, there are abundant problems, good things, hatred, jealousy. It's just abundant of all things. Because you didn't serve God in the midst of all this with the joy. What then happens? Verse 48. Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. That's number one. It's a sign. If you want to see whether you're serving God well, check hunger, 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 hunger. Refuse a lot. Hunger. Hunger. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, to, to, to struggle to know what am I putting on this Sunday. It's a confirmation something is wrong somewhere. And in want of all things, all things from people to things, favor, everything, you just, you are in need. Just know something is wrong in your way you serve. He said, this will happen until the Lord put a yoke on your neck, iron yoke, until you are destroyed. When you serve God sorrowful, complaining, murmuring, grumbling, with bitterness, you will suffer in ministry. You don't need a demon. Jehovah himself will come and fight you. Many pastors are struggling because they are bitter against their leaders. They are bitter against their members. They are so angry at a lot of things. And they think this is independent from their benefits. Yet the only receipt you need to access what belongs to you is God to see you joyful. Then he gives you. He said the field, the vine is with that. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. Joel chapter 1, verse 12. The vine is dried up. The fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree. The palm tree also. And the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are with that. Because. 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 Joy is with that away from the sons of men. Because joy with that. Everything around you with us. Joy is part of your ministry success strategy. Joy. Know the truth in serving. There are others who serve and undermine authorities. That's not true. I love what they do in, in the militaries and police. You don't just walk from your house and go on duty. You go for parade, salute the seniors, then go on duty. Yeah. You don't just move like you, 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 there are criminals in your village, then you start to run. No. First thing, even if you know they are thieves, salute the senior, then go and arrest. So everywhere, in ministry, there are people God put ahead of you. Salute them as you serve God. 
If you don't salute them, you are breaking the protocol of honor. If you honor them, it will be well with you. If you don't honor, it won't be well. Praise the Lord. Serve the Lord with honor. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Learn that to serve him with honor. Just apply the truth required in your serving. Serve the Lord consistently. Serve him. It was the duty of Zachariah to be in the tabernacle. And he was there when he was needed. The angel actually appeared in the temple earlier than Zachariah. Knowing Zachariah is coming today, the angel was waiting. So imagine if then Zachariah did not show up and gave an excuse. What was going to happen? He was going to have another year of barrenness and he'll be blaming the devil, yet he's missing services. Now, look at this scripture. Luke chapter 1, from verse number 5, 6, 7, going down. It then said there were two men, two, this couple, Zachariah and Elizabeth. They were old and stricken in age. But Elizabeth was barren, not Zachariah, Elizabeth. But the answer for the children to have a child was not given to Elizabeth, who is barren. It was given to Zachariah because he was saving. God spoke to the one who is saving, not the one who has a condition. So it's not your condition that is going to bring, bring God. It's your service. God spoke to Zachariah because he was on duty. If you don't serve him, you will stay in your condition. Praise the Lord. He saved him. To the extent that he was told at old age, you're going to have a son. He didn't stop saving. He said, I need to hurry. He didn't celebrate the miracle. He honored his duty. Verse number 23, he said, and Zachariah, after the time of his service, in the tabernacle. Then he went home. He didn't say, ah, oh, good news. An angel appeared to me. I need to go and tell Elizabeth. No. He said, duty first and two is complete. It came to pass that as soon as the day is not a day, you hear the word of God today that you're going to have a child, you would have run home. After years of waiting, this man did not go. After days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. The good news could not move him. He was too stuck to serving God. Serving God. Serving God. Yet so many pastors have shifted serving God because someone promised them to take them for dinner, for lunch, <laughs> because someone wants to give them to buy them a shirt in town and everything is shifted <laughs> oh my god Zachariah is told you are going to have a child your first child in old age the man is still lingering in the service serving God for days why? Because kingdom service is higher than the demand of your heart, your life. You should serve God loyally, without guile, without trickery, without manipulation. Serve God genuinely. Serve God genuinely. He said, and they brought money unto the Levites. Money to the Levites. They collected day by day and the money was in abundance. In abundance. 
and they did not need to reckon about the money for they were faithful. They didn't need to do our audit because the people were faithful. Head loyal, faithful. I've been trusted with this one. I should be faithful with it. I should be faithful with it. Praise the Lord. You should know what you serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. Serve God in obedience to his voice. Deuteronomy chapter number 3, verse 17 and 18. Serve God in obedience to his voice. Is it in the plain of Jordan, because there, even on the plain of sea, even the salt sea under, verse number 18. Daniel, sorry, give me Daniel. Did I say Deuteronomy? Daniel, chapter 3, 17 and 18. 3, 18 and 17. He said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able. They didn't say the God to whom we pray to. No, the God we serve. The God we serve. The God we serve is able to deliver us. So confidence in battle must be service-based. Confidence in battles must be service-based. How much you serve God should give you confidence in battles. He delivers from this burning fairy furnace. He will deliver us out of thy hand. Because we serve God, he will deliver us from his hand. O oh, king, verse number 18. Then he went on to say, even if he doesn't, even if he does not, let it be known, O king, that we will not serve thy God. Which means we are decided on what to serve. We are decided. You can't move us from this. We would rather die than not serve God. That's what they were saying. We would rather die than not serve God. That was their position. You hear Nebuchadnezzar when he came on, Daniel was in the lion's den in chapter 6. You then find Nebuchadnezzar said, Daniel, servant of the Most High God, has God, whom you continually serve, delivered you. Which they were aware, even when he hatred, people who serve God don't die cheap. They were very aware. People who serve God, they don't just die. They were very aware. So there is life protection when you serve God. Life protection. You don't just perish, crash. No. You're protected. Exodus chapter number 23, verse number 25 and 26. When you serve God, he said, and you shall serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. So when you serve God, God blesses what you eat. God blesses what you eat. He blesses your bread. Number one, it means your house will not like bread. Because he can't bless the air. He blesses the bread because he's there. And your water. And it takes sicknesses away from the midst of it. You remain healthy, strong. You remain strong all seasons because you serve him. I can confess to you, testify of the Lord's goodness. Over 20 years of serving God and preaching, I have never missed a service because I'm sick. Not one. Not one day. 
He has preserved me. Every day. He has protected. Scripture is true. You serve him. You will take away sickness from thee. You serve him. You will take sickness away. You know, it was a time in 2004, I had uh, a very dangerous headache on a Saturday. It was so, I don't even know where it came from. It was horrible that I had to put a towel, wet towel on my head and it would be smoking because the temperature was too hot. I could not raise myself. I was sleeping on the floor. Horrible pain. You know, 10. Horrible. Sunday was coming. Pastor C came and said, have you arranged someone who can preach on Sunday? I said, I'm preaching. I said, I'm preaching. I was lying on the floor. Around 7 o'clock, I said, prepare my clothes. I need to prepare to go and minister. I was still on the floor. When they finished finish preparing my suit, I just jack up and hold my Bible to church. And they say, stupid devil. Scripture says, when you serve him, I will take. It's not me who will take. He said, I will. You will come and take away. You will come and take it away. You will come and take it away. So you can secure your health by serving God. That's why you find most of the people God used to go out and win souls in church history. Most of them, they lived over 80 plus years in life, in health. Scripture is not all those that serve God in Scripture. Hey, Moses started ministry at 80. <laughs> the man pushed, going. Abraham moved. All of these were over 100 years old. Guys, 147, 175, 120. They were going because they were serving God. Don't look your eyes on what you will get in ministry. Look at what you are doing to serve God. So you will bless your bread. You will take away sicknesses and diseases away from you. So there is protection from sickness. There is protection. There is protection. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 11, 18 to 15. You save him, something will happen to you. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the commandment, my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to save him with all your heart and with all your soul. You give your whole when you are serving God. You give your whole when you serve God. You give your whole heart and your whole soul. Verse that follows. What will happen when you serve God at this frequency? He didn't say it's just serve. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He didn't say you serve. He said with all your heart. Not all wins can take you to the next level. If you watch soccer, there, there, there are times when you, you win 1-0, when they need you to score 3-0. You will go home with your victory. Did you hear what I said? 
You won, but it's not enough. That's why he said, with all your heart. There is part that needs to be done to move to the next level. All your heart. If you don't meet that one, you are going home. That I will give you rain in your land in due season. So the natural world is waiting to respond to you according to how you serve God. You enter a place, rain starts to come. The first rain and the later rain. That thou mayest gather corn and thy wine and thy oil. You have all this gathered to you because you serve him. Verse 15. And I will send grass. Ah. So grass does not grow. It is sent. Then I will send grass to thy field for thy cattle. And thou shalt eat and be in full. Did you see now? So certain things that you think are going to grow, they don't grow, they are sent. He said, I will send the grass. I will send the grass. So there are certain things that will never be found in your ministry, but they are going to be sent to you when you serve God. They are not in your church right now, but they are already somewhere. God will send them when he sees how you serve now. Grass is not local. It's sent from somewhere. I'll send the grass. I'll send the grass. This reminds me when I was starting ministry, when I was starting some years ago, there was a farmer who came from Banget with 50 bags of wheat looking for me in cold comfort, holding a paper. He said, God spoke to me when I was in the field and said, look for my servant. And I got it. And I shared among the members. He said, go and make bread. Go and make bread. One, one couple came from Marlborough when I was in Cold Comfort there with couches, sofas, Coffee tables. With the name, said, we dreamed a dream together with my husband. And the name showed. And we were asking people, where is this man? He was just starting ministry. He said, somewhere, somewhere in Court Gunford. So they were moving around the movie, asking the people. When they got to Court Gunford, they were told, the pastor stays there. And they gave me, bring your set of couches coffee tables, city covers. You don't need to struggle. God will send when you serve. Serve him and see how he does it. One day, I received seven cars. One day. I didn't say two. I said seven. Not from Harare. Two were from Harare. Five from outside Harare. They were coming. God said. God said. God said. God said. If you save, you will send. You save. He will send. He will send. When you serve, he will send. You serve, he will send. Which means he knows where you are. And you will make provisions for that. First Samuel chapter number seven, verse number three. First Samuel chapter seven, verse number three. I wanted to see this one of the benefits of serving God.
And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your heart, and put away strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and save him only, save him only, what will happen? He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So service to God is actually a platform of delivering from the wicked one. When you serve God, God comes and delivers you from the hand of the wicked. You serve him, he will deliver you from the hand of the wicked. Let the church know that certain demons will run away because you are serving in the house of God. That's why you find someone enters a church so tattered, dejected, and probably they are just cleaning in the church. You may see one year nothing is happening, but keep on looking. You will see the person's life changing. Now next time the person is dressing better. Ah, the next time the person is parking a car outside. Because you, there are so many demons kicked out every time someone is serving God. Don't worry about people who try to look nice without serving God. They will be broke soon. I can tell you this. There are people who look so smart. As long as they don't serve God, their, sec their wealth and blessing is not secure. They'll be broke. Nothing secures your blessing like serving God. Secures your blessing. You will be delivered from the hand of the wicked because you serve God. Praise the Lord. When you serve God, you have access to prosperity and pleasures. Access to prosperity and pleasures. I always imagine what would have happened to my life if I didn't serve God. Because there was no way I would be where I am there was no way I would have the life I have. There was no way, no possible. I can trace everything happening to one thing, the opportunity to serve God and his servants. If they obey him and serve him, they will. It's not a joke. They will spend their days in prosperity. If there is anything you need to hunger as a pastor, is to find opportunity to serve God. Not only serve God, serve his servants. Serve them. Scripture says in Psalm 112, verse number 2, 1 to 2, he said, and your seed shall be mighty upon the earth. All those that serve God, their children will be mighty. Not all children on earth who are of your age are of your age. Some are already older than you by the size of their altars. You might be in the same class, but you are not in the same class. Their parents were serving pastors. Yours were not serving anyway. Some people start on career, some start on inheritance. They are different. They are different. Serve God and kick poverty out of your generation. Serve God in such a way that no matter how wicked the devil will become, none of your children will be broke. Serve God. Serve God. Look at how Abraham saved God up to now. Every Jew is making progress. Everyone, wherever they go, they make progress. The men saved God up to now, grandchildren. Eish. Up to now. Psalm 112, 
verse number three said, and wealth and riches shall be in his house. <laughs> May this be your portion. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Because he says, God, wealth and riches shall be in his house. <laughs> and his righteousness shall endure forever. Which means in your house there shall be no drug addicts. There shall be no wicked children. Because you saved God. Righteousness endure forever. Because you saved God. Say amen. Second Chronicles chapter number 15, verse number 12 and 19. Second Chronicles 15. Say, and they entered into the covenant to seek God of their father with all their heart and with all their soul. They actually entered, say, we have made our mind, our family, we are going to serve God. We have made our mind, we are going to serve God. Give me verse 19. They are going to serve God. Because they did this to serve God, he said, and there was no war unto them. Eh? 35 years of us, no war, no war. Why? They entered into a covenant to say, we are ready to serve God, and there was no war. No war. Some battles you see people work in your church ministries, they are not necessary. They are just less. They are not serving God. They are not serving God. It might take a little time when you look like a mockery, where people mock on your life. Say, ah, always hanging around the church, hanging around the pastors, wasting your time. Uh, I grew in a, that environment where people were calling us Koropo Zipa Church. And they would be moving around, putting on tie, and you'll be looking like you are very broke. You have no money even to give offering. You will be using your hands to clean the toilet, the bathrooms, and so forth. That's the offering you don't have. And they were laughing. One of them, I saw them in town one time in, in Balandine. I don't know where he was going. So I saw him. I said, let me chase him with my car. So that he can see that boy is in a machine. He wanted to avoid it, but the corner was not even easy to. He said, hey, good to see you. You, you, you. you will be tormented by the level of progress. Don't be fooled by people who look like they are prosperous today. They will not be tomorrow. They will not be. It's unscriptural. There will not be. Malachi chapter 3. There was no war. No war. Train them to serve God. Whether they are young people, train them. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 14 to 18. Oh my God. People were now complaining because they were seeing people who don't serve God looking like they are better off and they look like their life move. And we have said, it is in vain to serve God. People were now complaining because people who don't serve were driving, having good things. So it is in vain. What profit is it that we have kept the ordinances? And what have we walked eh, mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Fastings before God and yet our lives look miserable. What does this profit? They were now complaining. Verse number 15. Oh my God. An elder. Uh, what happened? And now we call the proud happy. Can you imagine? Now people are saying that those that are proud are happy people. Eh? They that work in wickedness are set up. They are prospering. They are enjoying life. People are now talking as if serving God is mocker. He said, yeah, they have tempted God, even, are uh, even delivered. Can you imagine those that are cursing God, they will be driving. And you who is always praying, Lord, bless our pastor. Hey, Lord, grow your work. And you're empty and broke. 
Verse number 16. The word of God has all answers to all situations. Then say, they said that they that feared the Lord speak often one to another. Which means while you are serving, be careful of your conversations. While you are serving God, be careful of your conversations. You can kick God out with your conversation. While you are serving, what are you talking about? They said one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. They were thinking he's just talking on their own, and God was listening. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear God, the Lord, and was brought, what, that thought on his name, upon his name. He said, this kind of people, let me document, I'll bless them, I'll surprise them. They are serving God like this, which means while you are sewing or you are cleaning, you should be cleaning, not murmuring. Hey, they just left me. They said we'll be here by two. They didn't come. You, you don't complain. No. Whether you arrange with the people, we are going to a crusade and they don't come. Go joyfully and serve God. Don't complain. These people are just fake people, hypocrites. Uh -uh. Don't curse people. Don't kiss them. Just go. Save God. Verse number 17. And they shall be mine. These ones. God said, these ones shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In that day, which means everyone is saving God, is a day things shall change. <laughs> in that day, in that day, I will make Eh? When I make up my jewels, which means that day God will turn you from just a raw material to become a jewel. He said, one day I will change your story. He said, I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serveth him. Look at the part. The man that serveth him. Everyone who serves God has a good day waiting for them. There's a good day coming. You save God? Ah, no matter how broke you are, good things are going to happen. <laughs> Look at the next verse. Oh my God. I pray everyone would know this secret. Then you who are complaining today, saying, what is the profit to save God? Others are just not saving. Things are working. He said, you shall return on that day. And when you return, you shall descend between the righteous and the wicked. And between him that serve God and him that shall not, it shall be clear. The distinction shall be so public. These are the ones that serve God. It shall be clear. He said, it will be so obvious. Don't worry about what happens today. But there is a day where they shall see. There is a total distinction in the same church. This one serves God, but this one did not. You will see by how God changes life. Save him. Save him. Save him. Save him. Save him. Save him. So you will be exempted from economic meltdowns others suffer. God has a way to keep you above because you serve him. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Malachi chapter 4, verse number 2, 1 and 2. Because you serve God. It continued. Chapter 4, verse number 1. He said, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as a woven. These people don't know who are not serving God. There is a day coming where economy shall burn like an oven. <laughs> and all the proud, yea, all of them that do wickedly, they shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. They don't even know that there is a day coming to roast them while they are avoiding serving God. They will be roasted in that day. 
says the Lord. <laughs> he said, of course, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. All the things they thought they would survive with, he said they will be bent from root to branch. But look at the next part. What will happen to those that serve God? <laughs> but unto you who serve him, unto you who fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing wings. You can't serve God and God does not maintain your health. He said, with healing wings on his wings, and you shall go forth. In the time when others are singing, you will be going forth. Oh my God. And you grow up, which means it's a forward and upward movement. Because you serve God. Forward and upward. Because you serve God. While others are going down, you will be going forward and upward. Forward and upward. Forward and upward. Others will say, hey, how are they doing it? Forward and upward. Because we have a divine backing. Because we serve God. I pray you master this. When you serve God, you are entitled to promotions. Divine promotions. Don't forget that on promotion is only given to those that serve, serving members. <laughs> you don't promote an ex-member. No, you promote serving member, current serving members. Current serving members. If you don't save now, if you used to save and you don't save now, you are not worth the promotion because promotion is given to saving members. Saving members. If you are not saving, you are no longer a candidate for promotion because they only promote saving members, not ex-members. So if you are no longer saving, you are not a candidate for God to promote you. Serve God. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 22, verse 26 and 27. But you shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. The one who wants to be great among you must be the one who looks younger. And he that is chief is the one that do serve. If you want to be in command on high place, the first qualification is serve to be in charge. Which means your authority is going to be service-based. Your position shall be service-based. How much you serve him? Verse number 27. Look at how Jesus then says. He said, for whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as one that Serve. Jesus said, that's why I'm here. I'm here just to serve. The next thing is, when you serve, you are entitled to divine inheritance. You serve God, you are entitled to divine inheritance. Colossians chapter 3 verse 24. Colossians chapter 3 verse 24. Colossians chapter 3 verse 24. He said, knowing that of the Lord, start to verse number 23, I think. He said, whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Don't be half-hearted. Do it heartily. As unto the Lord, not unto man. As unto the Lord, not as unto man. Whatever. See God in picture. 
Verse that follows. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. If you serve, you shall receive the inheritance. If you serve, you shall receive the inheritance. I want you also to know that you should serve God despite. Serve God despite. Whether you are liked, hated, jealous, fought, you are not feeling well, whatever it is, serve God. Yeah. We are still battling with your issues. Serve God. Serve God. Serve God despite. You have no other excuse. You know, worshiping God is not based on anything except life. Because scripture says, let them, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So it's breath based, not circumstance based. So even if you have breath under the bridge, praise him. Or your breath hungry, praise him. Yeah? Or you have, you have breath and they have stripped you naked. Praise him in that nakedness because of the breath. We praise God for breath. Breath is the motivation for why we worship and praise him. Breath. Not circumstance. It's not how we are treated, what things happen, you know. Breath, breath. Because we are alive. Because no one will get sick when you are dead. No one will be hated when you are dead. All the things people do to you is because of life. You can't be poor when you're dead. You can't owe anyone. You're dead, you're dead. Save him despite. That's why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, even if he does not deliver us, we will save him. We will save him. The next thing that I need you to know is serve God continually. Don't serve him once. Serve him continually. Daniel chapter 6, verse number 20. Serve him continually. Not once. Continually. Serve him continually. And when he came unto the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake unto and said unto Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou serveth continually, whom thou serveth continually, able to deliver thee from the lions. So there is a way God treats you when you are in the midst of lions when you serve him continually. When you serve him continually, lions don't eat you. They don't, because you serve him continually. As the God whom you serve continually, not sometime. You don't have to say, I used to serve God. I used, no. <laughs> when you're already an ex, you no longer qualify for benefits. <laughs> you must serve him continually. 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 You must serve him continually. You must serve God in righteousness. You must serve God in righteousness. Romans chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. You must serve God in righteousness. 14, 17, and 18. Romans 14, 17, and 18. For the kingdom of God is not meat, but in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Look at the next part, verse number 18. He said, For he that in these things, 
He that in these things saveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of man. If you then save God in these ones, he said automatic, you are accepted before God, you are approved by man. You have no problem in any place because you serve God in the right way. Make a decision to upgrade your service to God. Make a decision to make your family a family that serves God. Make a decision that with your life, you will serve him. Make a decision that at all cost, I will serve the Lord. Nothing will take me out from serving God. You make a decision and you see how God will decorate your life. How you decorate your life. Save him. He will bless. It pays to serve God. It pays to serve the Lord. It pays to serve the Almighty. It pays to be found worthy to be in the vineyard of the Lord. I believe this teaching will help you to help also others. Many people are in church. You cannot grow spiritually without saving God. It's not possible. It remains a desire. Saving God is part of what brings growth. You can check from Hebrews chapter number 5. From verse number 13, 12 to 14, I think. Give me a message, uh, amplified. It will tell you. you. Save God. Even though by this time you ought to be teachers, teaching others, you actually need someone to teach you over again the very first elementary or principles of God's word. You have come to need milk, not solid food. The next verse, why is it happening like that? For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will in purpose, thought, and action. And for he is a mere infant, not able to talk yet. Verse 14, but solid food, is for fully grown men, for those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice. Trained by practice. There has to be practice for you to exercise your mental faculties or your position to grow in Christ. Anyone who is in church and has been in church not serving, I can tell you, anytime they go through an attack, you're just waiting to see another backslider. It is kingdom service that builds believers, strengthen them. Strengthen them, build them. And you must serve him with joy, delight, excitement that I'm privileged to preach, I'm privileged to teach, I'm privileged to pastor, I'm privileged to lead the God's people, I'm privileged with the joy in your heart. And to see how God is going to bless you. Hey, questions? I'm done. Those that serve him they always excel. Those that serve him, they always find breakthroughs in their lives. Anyone have a question? Anyone with a question? We 
We are living in a world where pastors are now believing that having extra jobs and doing some piecework is going to guarantee their prosperity more than serving God. Say amen. amen. Yeah. People are now afraid to wait and serve God. And they will be using Paul had a tent making business. So, all I can say is I was in Israel three times and there is no house for Paul, but there is a house for Peter. That's all I can say. If you want tent making and all those, don't also collect that part. Collect also the prisons, the stoning, the storms, shipwrecks, because that's part of what Paul experienced on having tent making, which Peter did not. So, and what I say, she she talked about much Jerry Arch, Nukrobo, Matombo, Asisiane. You don't pick one thing. Did you want to say? You don't pick one thing. If you want the other part, collect the other part. Because Paul was not independent to his journey, he was part of his whole journey. Amen. If God called you to do so, do it. If he didn't, hey, stick to your line. Stick to your line. Don't confuse not having what they have as poverty. I'll repeat. Not having what they have is not poverty. Have, not having what you need is poverty. Not <laughs> is it too clear? If you don't have what they have, but you have what you need, you are not poor. You are only poor because you don't have what you need, not failing to have what they have. Trying to have what they have is competition. It's not prosperity. Having what you need, that's prosperity. Yeah. Do you have what you need? Ah. That's okay. <laughs> okay, any question? And we pray. Oh, my God. If you have online questions... The Lord bless his people. Now, I want you to make a prayer for your life and ministry uh, from Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 21. I'll use the message, uh, the Passion Translation. I want you to pray for yourself. He said, May ye work perfection into every part of you, giving you all that you need to fulfill your destiny. May he give you all that you need to fulfill your destiny. And may he express through you all that is excellent and well-pleasing to him through the life, your life union with Jesus Christ and only one who is to receive all the glory forever. I want you to pray this prayer to you, for yourself, your ministry. Lord, give me all that I need to fulfill my destiny. Father, give me all 
that I need to fulfill my destiny. On this assignment, on this calling, in this territory you send me, give me all that I need to fulfill my destiny. Please pray this prayer to God. I'm not doubting my call. I'm not doubting my destiny. I'm not doubting your voice. But I'm just saying, Lord, put things in my hand that makes me achieve all that you called me to become. All that I need to become what I want me to be. Let me have them. Take your position to pray. I know God is going to take you further and forward. You experience his glory, his power. You experience his favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to pray. Father, give me all. Send on my way. Put on my life. Everything. Everything. That makes me fulfill my destiny my calling, my purpose, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everything that makes me fulfill my destiny, that makes me achieve my call, achieve my purpose, put it in my hand, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 